Hey guys, it's Lori and Jana, and we are back for another monthly member training. And this one is a good one. So get your popcorn, sit on the couch with- <laughs> Buckle your seat belts, right? Right, this is a really great one. And I'm really excited, it's, they're all amazing. I say this every month, I know it's redundant, but we always push out good content. And so this one, if you haven't noticed, we are ready to go. We're all professional. Uh, our hair and our makeup is done because we're talking about tips on filming and do's and don'ts and just a little bit of, you know, encouragement to increase and make your videos a little bit better. So mm -hmm. Jana had a great idea with this one. So thanks, Jana. Absolutely. Well, you are Miss uh, Rockstar when it comes to great videos and presentation and branding. So uh, I thought this would be a perfect topic. I know. And we're, we are always, I mean, nowadays, everything I read, everything I learn is like video, video, video. And so there's so many different dynamics of it. People want real, but then they also want polished. So we're just gonna go through a few tips for you to start implementing when you're thinking about doing videos, what will help your presence and your branding for your company. And so first we're gonna just discuss the importance of it. The importance of why, we, why should we have videos? Yeah, I think that that's a great, um, a, a great starting place. You always wanna ask why, am I doing the right thing, right? Why would I want to even spend the time, energy and effort in doing this? And if it doesn't have a payoff, then maybe there's something better to do. But we know how important video is. We know the power of video in today's age. Um, it's hilarious <laughs> because I am going through um, getting my real estate license for a few reasons. Uh, one is to be a subject matter expert and I've got the old school book. Yes, I've got an online thing that just has words and I'm like, can someone read this to me or can someone show me a video <laughs> like the old school way that we learn now is literally changed um, everything and the power of video people would rather watch something than sit down and read it you know um, be as it may that's just the reality that we're in so this is a great way um, for you to shoot a video and then be able to market it and use it as a platform to connect to your your potential clients to connect with the clients you already have to literally build a tribe build Build a herd that is going to listen to you. You can grab their attention. And um, it's just a wonderful way to build relationships, I say, stronger and then brand new. Yeah, I think that's so good. And if I just sit here and think about all the different videos you make. So you make videos personally for us, our, your, our team, right? So if you're getting ready to go on vacation or you're very busy, then you will make videos and let us know things that we need to do or train us on something via video. So that's in-house, right? So, or stagers or whatever it is, that's in-house. And then you think about, okay, we do our Facebook live videos. And, you know, so those are ones that are out in the warehouse or out and about. But then we also do things like um, modules. That's a video. We do our 39 steps. That's a video. So we are constantly doing video, video, video. And there are certain scenarios for each video. I think that is really important is the setup. And so I think um, we should share a little bit about the different types of setups, um, what you should and shouldn't do. Um, we can talk about our setups right here um, and, and the importance of it. So yeah, we'll I go think ahead and start. That's great. And you know, Lori, what I always do is I start out by saying, number one, who's our audience, right? And what is our topic? Just like you mentioned, if we're doing a, a how-to um, video, well, I might be in the warehouse. That's going to that's gonna direct my set. So what is your set that you're using? And you base that on your audience and your content. What are you going to be talking about that day? So I think that that's where I start. And I think it's a really good thing to prep and plan your setup um, because you can't just hit play or hit record and um, and expect the best and many times we're so busy we but we have to put thought behind that 
Yeah, I mean, if you think about the very first reality show, that was even scripted. So yes. the reality shows are even scripted, and there's a camera crew. You think about HGTV, which, you know, you did a season last year of, and thinking about us going and staging and it looking, you know, like it's happening in the natural, but even that is scripted and it's planned out and lighting is put into consideration and people walking into the room and out of the room, everything is planned. And so there's definitely times for like the raw when maybe you're doing a walkthrough of the house before you stage it or during a stage, uh, maybe you're gonna give the raw warehouse tour, whatever that is, but there's definitely an importance, even if you something looks unscripted to have it scripted and planned in a way. So um, I think one great thing to know is like Janet, let's share how you set up your office for today's video. Yeah, so you know, before Lori and I obviously we had a 10:30 appointment to do this, but we uh, before that I was 10 o'clock. I was all right. Let me fix some hair. You know, let me put a little bit more um, a lipstick on because lighting can impact and it can wash me out. Um, and I, of course. Um, have my ring light here just like Lori let me turn this off and you can see you know I've got this I can have shadows it can be a little darker I even have my lamp let me even turn this around um, look at this even this is uh, to help with sound and you don't have to go to this this <laughs> Uh, extreme but I took my lampshade off just so that I can get a little bit more lighting there and it's going to help um, you know not have the shadow effect so I, I don't turn this all the way up you can see what that's gonna do to me um, but I can uh, get a little bit of light there I can move this and I'm gonna do a little checking to make sure that I don't have a big shadow going on um, in my face now I'm also gonna look at my background and I've lit, lit a candle, you know, Lori and I, here we go with our candles. I actually work with the candle in my office and I'm sure that, you know, you light your candles too. It just kind of helps with, uh, this was an interesting wayside point. And of course, this is our members. We're a little bit more real with you guys than we be, would be if we're posting this for the masses to see. But um, having smell as you get older, one of the, the, the things that you lose is your sense of smell, which can get into you know all of the bad stuff of memory loss. So having those smells around you, it's not only a, a great ambiance that it sets, but it's good, it's beneficial for you, it helps calm you down and it just kind of sets a sense um, and then of course my background of course dream is spelled backwards when you're looking at it um, but I've got that there as inspiration as people are scrolling through um, even when we're taking this video and we're putting it on our member page it may get you oh that's a cool little background you know subconsciously you stop and you watch because you see something interesting um, so I can move this around um, but I'm gonna make sure that I've got a great setup at least that that draws people in as they're scrolling um, so I'm going to make sure I'm prepared. I'm going to make sure that my background is prepared. I'm going to make sure the lighting is, is good. I'm going to also make sure that my phone is turned off um, so that it doesn't ring. You know, the notifications. Now, sometimes we have a little side noise with our um, office, but we're going to minimize that. I've got my door closed. People know, okay, Jana's door's closed. She's probably recording or doing something. And uh, and I'm just kind of setting up the scene um, so that we have a successful video. I'm making sure that my camera is not way up here and way down here so that you're looking at my nose. Um, so, you know, if I need to, uh, if I need to, you know, kind of go head on head, I can do that. And I just have it on my desk, but I have been known to prop up books. It's hilarious just to see the behind the scenes of, of my office. Um, but that's kind of how I do it, Lori, as far as some tips um, and, and tricks, um, you know, as far as setup goes. How about you? Well, literally, I'm sitting in the entrance to where our garage meets our dining room. So you can kind of see here. Um, and I have a cart that has lots of, you know, fun signs. I have one for summer that says, let's flamingo on it. It just has like, you know, some fun stuff on it. And I use that a lot of times. I actually, my computer, this is pretty funny, is we have one of those big, gigantic family Bibles. <laughs> 
that I inherited from I don't know who, but it's the dust on it. <laughs> well, it's the perfect height for me yeah. to put my laptop on, and it's as big as my laptop. It's really the big one. And of course, yes, I have my ring light. You can see it in my in my eyes. But um, it's it's I'm trying to showcase, like Jana said, she always had the candle. You guys see the candle burning over there. Um, so this is literally we have a tiny place. This is our dining room, and then right behind it is our living room. And so just trying to get the light. I mean, I have a window right here. <laughs> I mean, but it's the right lighting and nobody would know the difference. Like yeah. they wouldn't know if I'm in a, in a showroom besides if I had TV on, which would be a huge no, no, that's something to think about. Um, but, and also making sure, like Jana said, there's so many times that I see videos where it's up too high, it's facing down. And then it's almost like a red flag to the people that there's something wrong. So it's distracting them. Or obviously we don't want to go up the nose or see the extra chins that you probably don't have, but it's actually showing that you would have, right? Yeah. So I think that's really important. And just, you know, I like to change it around sometimes. Sometimes I'll be behind the table or in front of the table. But nonetheless, it's getting a, a good spot. And, and I will actually, and I know Janet does this too, I will like sit there and I will look all through the picture. Like, what am I missing? Like, is there something that's on the chair? Or like, one thing I can point out on this video is I see my highlighter bing, right there. <laughs> So yeah, right. You start to, to get used to trying to check those things out. So, um, but yeah, and look at those things. And it's really important. Another equally thing, equally important thing that people don't realize that I used to be really, really bad at. I've been trying to improve it since we've been doing more videos and being at HSRA is the smile. If you guys notice, when we get on, we both are smiling. So before you start recording, put a smile on your face because my natural face resting is not very friendly. I'm usually, if Jan is talking, I smile. I make it a point to smile. I feel the same way inside, whether I'm smiling or not, but it's more pleasing than me resting like this. <laughs> right? If people are scrolling through, they're right. probably not gonna wanna stop, right? <laughs> Like, man, why is Lori mad? And that's just something I struggle with in general. Since I met my husband, he's been telling me that. Like, fix your face, because I know that's not how you feel. It's just the way my face rests. So be sure to always have a smile on your face. And I learned from Jana, she's one that does this very, very well, you guys, is when you're speaking, smile while you're speaking. You do that very well. So um, I've even implemented that in, in my personal life and everything. When you're speaking to somebody, you're smiling versus, you know, just speaking like this. It, it makes a huge difference, and I learned that from you, so thank you. Well, thank you, and, and yeah, I learned it because I also have a serious face a lot of times, and then, um, you know, watching myself, because when I have a serious face, my eyebrows go down, and I, you know, I, I it's, it is not a very inviting look, so when you can um, feel friendly and you're excited about conversation, you know, let your face show it, um, and I think, it's so important these days as people are scrolling down, um, they're seeing some interaction, they're seeing people have fun and, and be, um, be energetic and that's what's gonna draw people in for sure. You know, one more thing, Lori. Now, I've got some other videos to do and this is funny too. Uh, so I'll show you. I've got, you know, all of some clothes here, some shirts that I can change into that if I need to get more of a, um, a a look of professionalism and you know so depending again who my audience is i may dress up i might just put a jacket on um of course with you guys y'all are our family I, I didn't put the jacket on it's a little stuffy um but if i'm doing something that a lot the world's going to see i might look a little bit more put together think about that if you're only showing a video from here what is that presentation i'm not going to wear a lot of florally colors or something that might be on on trend but real faddish um, you know it's fashionable but it might that video is possibly going to last um, for 40 years 50 years on by the time like your grandkids could be seeing this so and um, think about that as I try to go solid colors maybe a little bit if I do a slight pattern a little bit of um, you know some some stripes what you have on is great we typically we're kind of black and white girls um, whenever we're dressing even in that 
in the, look at this, see, this is not what you would want to show on camera, but <laughs> again. Um, even, you know, your black and white curtains, that's going to be timeless. It's on trend, but it's also timeless. So think about that with your background, with what you're wearing, and um, that's going to help um, also attract your audience to you and set that professionalism. You know, if you're, if you're speaking to professionals, then you've got to look the part, dress yourself, stage yourself, stage your set, so that it's going to um, to speak that another thing I've got is a little mic um, so hear your sound you know if you are recording I have the um, the um, the the pieces on the wall that kind of help with that but if you need to invest in a little bit of the equipment you know our ring lights what do they cost less a hundred dollars maybe like 69 or something yeah. Or 89, yeah yeah so something just um, you can also get Let's see, I've got them probably somewhere, but there's some little ring light setups that you can get for um, your, uh, to attach, you know, here to your, um, your phone or anything like that. That's also a nice, and these things are like $9.99. So um, they're also something you might want to invest in, and a little mic, uh, a little um, some head, headphones or something, you know, those can kind of get distracting, but the, you want the sound to be great. You want the lighting to be great. And, uh, I think that that's a great, a, a wonderful setup whenever you're thinking through, um, who, what is my audience? What is, is the reason I'm doing this video? Let's set it up for success. I know Laura, we've been interviewing some of our speakers uh, for Summit. We have been um, interviewing our experts um, every month and it just helps. You can tell the people that are preparing, you know, they're in their office there. There's no distractions. Uh, they're there ready to be focused. And I think that's another key point is we have to have full engagement, full attention. I can't be sitting here. Now, if I have notes on my phone, which I do, again, another preparation, what are Lori and I going to be talking about? If I need to have a piece of paper with some key notes or my phone, but I'm not gonna be sitting here distracted going through my social media while I am engaging with someone. So I think full attention is key as well. Yeah, and I think too, um, knowing uh our facial going back to the facial expression when you end your video or even just in general like i can talk right now and i can look at myself i know it gets a little awkward i like to watch jana while she's talking um i learned that a long time ago even if if a friend is talking to have full engagement with them and to look at them it's just a respect thing but when you are doing videos to look at yourself because that's the best way you're going to learn your own facial expressions mm -hmm. And, you know, sometimes I've been known to do this, you know, and I, you know, we're done and I'm like, oh yeah, ha, ha. and then I didn't hit stop in, in time, right? And so depending on if it's just a video to your friends or whatever, that's fine. If it's a video to clients, uh, you might want to keep it a little bit more professional. Another thing that I've struggled with before are filler words and being uh, speaking uh, without saying uh every second or the other one for the millennials. I've tested my son on this before. We've had challenges in the car for driving somewhere to not say like. So we have to have a whole conversation without saying like, and it hurts your brain to do it, but it makes you a better person you know, we're, we're having a conversation and I have to actually stop and think, okay, what word would I use as if or, you know, you know, just you have to figure those things out. So you're really good at not using filler words. So what would be some tips? <laughs> well, I believe I am not good at it. It's one of my struggles for sure. And we love to keep the pace going. So what we'll do is we will just continue on with the sound, with the noise until our, our brain thinks of more things to say. So yes, if you can, um, uh, try to edit your language so that you are speaking powerful words. If you can say it in 10 words instead of 30 words, then go ahead and say it in those 10. That's another key thing. And as you think about what is coming out of my mouth, what are my power words and phrases that I'm going to use that I want to get across to my 
audience, that's going to help you be able to, uh, you know, piece those words together, the sentences um, in eloquence so that it is powerful um, for people. So I tr tu truly believe that, but definitely mess up. I feel like that a conversation, if it's you interviewing someone, uh, Lori and I flow really well together. Those are more interesting and engaging potentially than just me talking or, you know, one person talking to an audience because people have short attention spans. I've heard that it's even shorter than a goldfish now, less than nine seconds. Ridiculous, right? Uh, so we want to keep the, the, the content um, specialized and I think it comes back to what do I want to uh, to get across to my audience is this going to be something that's just short less than 60 seconds it's almost like an infomercial or a key takeaway is this going to be a little bit longer and in more of an interview style is it going to be a more content uh, rich and teachable moment that's when during those is when we tend to fill in our our uhs and ums and uh, continue on the conversation so just be real strategic with your word phrasing as much as you can and i think the more that you do it the better you're going to get it is a learned uh learned lesson and i think too if any of you are like me i just get so excited and i want to say so much in that second and so that's when it tends to go, grow longer. Even as Jana was speaking right now in my brain, I was already, oh yeah, I want to say how, I just want to talk so much. And I, and I struggle with that. And from what I've learned is that people will still be engaged if you slow it down. I know for me, if someone's talking really fast, even though I tend to do it, I think salesman, sales pitch, what are they trying to get past me really quick? When in actuality, which like right now I'm trying to slow it down, is we're just very excited to tell you everything. So maybe you have to have bullet points or notes like Jana has it on her phone. I print out our, our notes to make sure that we hit every category. And you probably, they pro people probably won't notice that you've slowed it down. Now, I could have said all that in like two seconds, just being so excited. So um, I think that's really important and also, paying attention to a lot of times if my brain is going, am I paying attention to what the other person is saying? If you're doing an interview, Jen and I have a great way of, I mean, we just love each other. That's the best way I could think about it. It's the best working ex, you know, experience I've ever had. And so I just love her. But at the same time, it's respecting and going back and forth, back and forth and engaging each other and not talking over each other. We see that a lot on social media nowadays, I think. Yeah, because you've got to think about, especially if you're doing an interview style or, you know, back and forth like Lori and I do to engage, then there is a delay. So you have to think about that. So everything that Lori says, if I, if I were to say, aha, uh -huh, yes, da, 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 you know, that's going to switch back to me and then switch back to her. It's, there's going to be that time delay. We see it on TV. Anytime there's, there is someone commentating, maybe from a distance from another location, there's a little bit of lapse because sound is not travel as quickly so think about that and give people time to say and finish their phrasing I'm watching a ton of um, YouTube videos on some things on some leadership lessons and a lot of them may have two or three people on at one time they're talking over each other it kind of gets confusing that to stop and say go ahead you know what were you saying and I think as Lori and I have gotten um, grown this this skill in our lives we've allowed each other you know, we can, I can tell when Lori's got something to say, then I'm going to uh, try to uh, get to her as quick so she doesn't lose a thought process. And we don't have to rehearse. That's one beauty of this as well. The more that you have someone that you can work with, you can just have a topic. You can talk about your key points and just flow. And it's so nice to do that. Um, and then try to also, um, if you are holding the conversation, if you're the conversation carrier, like I am at the moment, I'm going to try to limit to at least three minutes, no more, so that I can pass it back to Lori and engage her. And we kind of ping pong back and forth. It keeps you as the audience a little bit more engaged as well. Yeah, definitely. What did you say one time? I think it was like more than three minutes if one person is talking. I know like just in normal videos. 
Yeah, the, the eyes start to roll back, you know, people just get, uh, get less uh, involved and engaged unless you are just that strong, um, you know, uh, almost like a comedian. People want to be entertained and they want information and in an entertaining way. That's something that I can work on. I try to get a little bit of emotion and excitement, but I don't want too much that it just loses all credibility. So there's a little bit of a balance. We want to laugh together. Um, we want to uh, give valuable content. Like you guys are going to have tons of takeaways from this, just the little things that make the tweaks and fine tune what you're doing. So yeah, people will lose, uh, lose interest quickly. Yeah. And I, I think about talking about like planning your social media and your video. So the different types of videos. So we have this, you have your back and forth, and then you also have just your plain videos where it's just you talking. Um, and then you also have little snippets. Like I saw one of our members today, which was great. It was Jonathan. He did a quick video of the realtor of the home that he was staging was putting plants in a planner out front. It was less than 60 seconds. He was giving props to the realtor, which is key to build your relationship with your realtor. But then there's also videos. Um, I know Sherry's been doing a ton of videos from her car. Carol Morgan does a lot of videos from her car. And those are so great and engaging as well. So Jenna, give us some tips on timing on those. Yeah, so I would think you would want to, depending on what your con the content that you want to get across, I mean, ideally 60 seconds is going to be something that people can jump on and get to know you a little bit, see the value that you bring, and then they're going to be on to the next. So if you can do small little segments, um, then that is wonderful. If you're doing something a little bit more of a lesson, you can keep it a little longer. Maybe it's, it's uh, there, there's a little bit more points, so maybe three minutes and then you might jump into 15 to 30 minutes if you have more content uh, to share with people but the longer it is the more enter entertaining it has to be hopefully Lori and I have been entertaining today um, as we're giving you this content and when we share stories in these longer segments um, and we point out different people that engages you and entices you in a different way so there is reason why we're saying what we're saying to keep you um, really focused on and, and have it be a lesson learned and great takeaways that you can adapt and implement. It's going to stay in your mind longer. Studies show if you're hearing something, it's going to, you're going to be able to regurgitate about 10% of what you hear. So the more storytelling that we can do, the more examples we can give, it's going to help increase that probability that you're going to remember it. That's so good. And then there's tons of platforms. The one that we're using right now, Zoom, is amazing. It has benefited us so many ways. Um, and I think that planning out those types of things as well, you have your Facebook platform, you have Instagram, Instagram TV, YouTube, Vimeo. We have tons of platforms that, we're, that are available. But also um, thinking about which platform you're going to use and how you're going to use, use it. For instance, Instagram, you have 60 seconds. You can't really do a long video unless you break it up and it's back to back to back. We love Zoom because you can record on Zoom. And then when you're done, you get the video and the audio. And that's just a double blessing because you can upload it for your podcast as well um, or whatever you want to do. But And then you can chop it up and put it on all those different platforms. So there's a ton of different platforms that you can use to do video. And I mean, I think Zoom is probably the best we've had so far to use to for multiple. Yes, we used to use any meeting and we paid for it, uh, but we found that there was a lot of time delay. There were some challenges with it. So Zoom has definitely been our preferred platform when we are initially recording, if it's going to be a longer content video. So yes, you can use Insta, Instagram, you can do um, IGTV. Lori, you've written about that and the importance of it. We can, of course, um, take, take advantage of Facebook Live and you can have multiple streams going on at one time uh, if you have the right uh, 
equipment to make that happen. Um, but the thing is, you want to take it, have an initial platform, and then repurpose that video. Can you cut it down into a certain segment, put it on your social media? Uh, you can have a YouTube channel that has maybe the longer uh, version of that, and everything's pointing back to your website, and you're just creating your own big web of information that people can find you a little bit more um, easily. And I think it's so fantastic. And so I think any other um, tips you can give, Jana? Any last minute things? I think everybody just needs to rock it out. They need to continue what they're doing. And if you feel like this is an area that you can improve upon, take some of the key things that we talked about today. It's just from lessons learned. It's from doing these over and over again. It's from bringing people in and seeing what some improvement steps that they can make. So this was real and relevant uh, to what we were going through here at HSRA. Um, just taking the time to plan and purpose, know who your audience is, uh, be able to have some talking points and know how long that video needs to be. Um, and then prepare all your set, all of those things, prepare yourself and you'll be good to go. You guys just rock it out, uh, continue to do what you do. And we're going to also build a platform at HSRA to be able to post and, um, and you know, shine you upon as we continue to grow. So keep doing what you're doing and we'll continuously improve. Awesome. Yeah, I think that should be our tagline for 2019, shine on. We want your businesses to shine on. That'd be a great way. And also, I know that a lot of this seems overwhelming. It's so simple for Janet and I because we work in it all the time. We're working in front of the camera all the time. And don't get overwhelmed if I could offer any encouragement. For instance, if you don't want to invest in a ring light, I always tell people just stand in front of a window. Let the window be in front of you, not behind you. Um, the reason why Jana's lamp works is because she has a light in front of her. If she didn't have the light in front of her, then she'd be in the dark and then you just see the lamp. So, I mean, it's just little things like that. And that's what we're here to do. We're here to help you shine, basically. And so um, we're so thankful that you're a member, that you're part of the HSRA family. We just want to see you grow. And so that was this month's topic training. I think there's that that was genius of you to think of that because it's something that we take for granted, right? We just don't think about it because we're doing it all the time. So it was a great topic. Yeah, that's so good. And I um, just want to encourage everyone to come to Summit and come to all of the events that we have throughout the year because you are going to be able to take advantage of those. Do videos from those events. Your clients see that you invest in your education enough to go. It's, you know, when there's a lot of buzz going on um, and there's a lot of different people, you want to leverage that time. So the investment that you uh, put into coming to events, use that uh, investment as a Another platform to be able to shoot videos at, um, connect and engage with your audience that you're building that can be literally an international audience. So um, it, it's unbelievable the, the uh, platform that video can hold for you. And of course, we're gonna have tons of information about this type of stuff at Summit. And so be sure to grab your ticket if you haven't. And since you're talking about Summit, if you haven't seen this yet, it's amazing, and uh, we want to see your picture you with this. I think I challenged some people to put it in their stage <laughs> and that they might get some bonus points if they do that and take a picture, but take a picture of your favorite place, tag us on social media, and since you will be coming to Summit, you'll get a credit to our bookstore, so this is awesome, awesome, next level, and that's what we're about here. So. Awesome. Well, until next time, you guys, be sure if you need anything, myhsra.com, we have resources for you. Reach out to us, email, Facebook. We are constantly on those platforms, so we're always there for you. Um, check out your member page, and we will see you at Summit. That's right. The first through the third in Dallas. All right. Till next month. See you guys. All right. Shine on.